Hi, I'm Pat Jellin and I'm the state senator for Somerville and Medford and parts of Winchester and Cambridge. These are unprecedented times. The worst epidemic since 1918 has cost Massachusetts more than 8,000 lives. A lot more people have health, serious health problems afterwards. It's revealed and exacerbated deep inequities. It's caused the highest unemployment since the Great Depression. We've already lost a lot of small businesses, especially restaurants, and lots more are on the edge. Many families are struggling to pay rent or their mortgage and thousands faced eviction when the moratorium ends in October. Food pantries are serving more people than ever. More people now are aware of the structural causes of poverty and inequality and how poverty and inequality affect everybody. For example, take the high number of deaths in nursing homes due to COVID. More than 60% of the people who died in Massachusetts from the pandemic died in nursing homes. A big cause was the lack of staff. They didn't have enough staff before that because of the low pay and the hard work. But by March, 40% of the, of the opportunities in nursing homes were vacant. So they were short 40% of the staff they needed. In addition, because the staff were so underpaid, they worked in jobs in multiple nursing homes and were likely to spread the disease. And because they were paid so little, they live in crowded apartments and then again, were more likely to be exposed to COVID. The murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Rayshard Brooks, and the deaths of so many other unarmed black people have unleashed the biggest uprising for social justice and racial justice in at least 50 years. This is certainly about stopping police violence, but we now realize that Black Lives Matter means we have to fix the institutional problems that cause black and brown people to have worse health, lower academic success, uh, lower pay, fewer assets, worse housing, and worse opportunity. The Black Lives Matter movement has brought ongoing, massive, and continuing mobilization it's made a moment when we may be able to address longstanding issues of law enforcement and the justice system and incarceration in a way we couldn't do it before. Both the House and the Senate have passed versions of a bill that will require certification for police officers and provide for decertification, as well as ban many dangerous practices. The differences between the House and Senate are still being negotiated but obviously we have to keep the momentum for real change, not just in public safety, but in public health, education, housing, environmental hazards, and so much more. I'm gonna just have a little time to mention here a few of the issues I'm working on with people in our communities. I hope people will visit my websites, patjellen.org and electpatjellen.org to find out more. As Chair of Elder Affairs, I'm working with unions and advocates in the industry to make nursing homes safer, but also to provide more alternatives so people can stay in less restrictive uh, settings. Like the VNA, an affordable, one of the very few affordable assisted living uh, residences in Massachusetts. We need to expand access to home care, and we need to raise the wages of direct care workers who are so essential and so undervalued. As the Chair of Labor and Workforce Development, I've been focused on making the unemployment system work. We were very happy when the federal government created uh, pandemic unemployment assistance so people in the gig economy, contract and temporary workers could get unemployment assistance. But it's been so frustrating as people have told us about waiting for weeks, even months, while the bureaucracy gave them incorrect instructions. And then if they reached a call center, they still got incorrect information and were kept waiting. So my office has been able to help people get their, um, get their assistance, but also we are trying to, we have managed to get them to change it so it's less um, frustrating, I hope. As a member of Ways and Means, I'll continue to focus on accountability for corrections and for sheriffs. They have uh, higher budgets and fewer inmates. 
I'll continue to advocate for increasing the money for public health, which has been cut by a third, and I'll explain why in a minute. And I'll continue to work for adequate and fair revenue. We have an increased need, obviously, for more spending, uh, especially in public health, but also in uh, long-term care, in housing, uh, and other issues, and education in particular. At the same time, we have less revenue because people are making less money and paying less taxes. But we've cut taxes by $3 billion since 2000. So we need to restore money from the loopholes that we've created, like companies that offshore their profits. In 2022, I hope we'll vote for that fair share amendment, which would add money for education and transportation. Finally, I just wanna report how happy we are about the one quarter budget we just passed. We aren't able to pass a full budget yet, but we are promising not to cut local aid to, to cities and towns and to schools. In addition, I'm glad that I was able to uh, get uh, $250,000 to support the construction of our new high school, which has had a big overrun that much uh, because of COVID. Uh, I know that government can make things better. Four years ago, I was lead sponsor of a pay equity bill, and I worked with many organizations and individuals to pass it. A seemingly small provision said that employers can't ask for best prospective employees for their salary history. A recent study shows that in states that have adopted that provision, Job changers get 5% higher offers, women get 8% higher offers, and black workers get 15% higher offers. So that law is shrinking the pay gap. It took a long time to pass, but it's making a difference. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful to serve the people of the second Middlesex district and to work with you. I'm grateful for all the people who've called and written and demonstrated and otherwise let me know their ideas and concerns. I hope you'll vote to allow me to continue to work with, for you and with you. You can vote by mail or vote early at City Hall or vote in person on September 1st. All the voting information is on my website. I hope we can get together soon, but that depends on keeping our distance and keeping safe now. Please stay safe and please stay in touch.